Welcome to Steph Reacts. We are going to react to another episode of Craig Facts on Caffeine. But before we get into that, we are going to look at our daily facts of the day. Did you know? Did you know that the human beings can only use a small fraction of Earth's water? I didn't know that, but now you do. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, man? We live in this bitch. Welcome to Craig Fact on Caffeine. And I drank plenty of caffeine today, and I'm high on several types of caffeine. <laughs> How y'all doing, man? I got some beautiful guests today. Uh, if all yourself can get it from God. God, God, God! To my right, two illustriously talented. I don't even know if those things... Two men I'm a fan of and friends with both these guys. One guy is so humble, um, it don't make no sense. It's like he just is just doing dope ass shit. He don't brag about it, he don't talk about it, he just do it. He's a great individual, somebody I admire. I want y'all to give it up for my guy Mars, man. Yeah. And also big bro in the game. One of my favorite men just in general. Fuck me in the comics. Solid stand-up dude. Uh, and shit, the talent speaks for itself. Uh, give it up for Slink Johnson, man. Yeah. You gotta give it up to Craig Smith because he's really doing a great job with the podcast and everything. He have wonderful guests. I must say that he is really comfortable doing this. March, my guy. L.A. native, right? Yes, sir. Where you, what part of L.A. you grew up in? Uh, Inglewood and Lancaster. Okay, so let's talk about it, man, because it's a lot of young cats that grew up in Southern California like all of us did on the show today except Sunny, right? Mm -hmm. And they've been trying. Super, ta super talented, dope music, you feel what I'm saying? And their career ain't going nowhere. And a lot of times when niggas do shit and their career don't go nowhere, they start to come up with these weird conspiracy theories. You got to be an Illuminati. <laughs> you got to go in that back room with an old white man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I mean? Tell these super talented dudes who it may not be working for them right now how it happened for you. How'd you go from just being a supremely talented everyday dude to a multi-platinum, multi-Grammy award winning producer? Uh, in my opinion, and everything that you do, Hard work. Hard work is the key to success. Some days you may not see the end of the tunnel. You may not see them as though you're going anywhere. But if you put in the hours, the effort, the energy, in about five years, you will be able to see a difference. I want to take up this opportunity to say that I would like to give this YouTube journey a try. And I'm seriously going to put everything on hold just to make sure that I fulfill my goal of not being able to physically go to work because I believe that if I can take this opportunity to do this YouTube thing right, I don't have to physically go to a job that I do not like, you know? I, that's why I, I, I like where I'm headed. I like that I'm able to reach daily milestones within this YouTube journey this platform within a short period of time and I really appreciate you guys for tuning in and it showed me that you guys are really really just loving this podcast platform and roast me material so you know what I'm going to keep pushing on content because of you guys the love and support you guys showed me within a short period of time it's just outstanding I really appreciate it um, what's diamond now? Diamond, okay. Oh, okay. But no, um I think like um as cliche as it may sound, it's it's consistency. Um you know, me understanding like that I have a gift is different than being talented. You know what I'm saying? It's a 
me having me having a gift is something that God gave me that you know I didn't ask for. I just already, you know what I'm saying, I already had it. So me understanding what my gift was and me understanding about the responsibility with my gift was like the journey of, you know, I think what a lot of people go through when it's like, man, ain't nobody, you know, fucking with me or this ain't working because you feel like it's supposed to happen a certain way. But, you know, if you just consistent with what you do and you find a way to be innovative in what you do, like do something different, right? you know what I'm saying? And, uh, you know, it, it just, everything kind of is about alignment, you know what right, I'm saying? Right, it's right. about timing. So, you know, you may feel like you're ready, but it may be some more things that you, you know, need to learn. And I'm learning every day, so I don't feel like I know everything, but I'm just open to learning every day and just being consistent. Right, right, good. Well, no, what was the, because this has happened to every dude in this room, right? Before you actually get on a little bit, there was a time where you thought, this might be, the, this might be it, mm-hmm. and it didn't happen. But you kept pushing after that after that failure, after that letdown. Yeah. What was the first letdown where you, where you felt like, I was almost on? And it- For me, I was on this path of basically becoming an, a network engineer and a public speaker. I I was in Toastmasters for the, I would say, year and a half. Ever since the pandemic happened, I was fully in Toastmasters and what's not. And for those that do not know, Toastmasters is a organization that actually allows you to improve your public speaking ability and everything like that. And I was doing um, information technology. I was studying for that. But, you know, within within those times, you know, something, you know, something happened. It, it's always something that chose, chose you off course. And you have to really find your way back. But within me finding myself, I was able to, you know, pick myself up slowly. It was a slow process because I felt as though... I had let myself down in in that aspect, but you know, slowly, I I I just started to do something different. I just opened this door to say, hey, why don't um, why don't I open my mind to not just go to college and work for somebody, then to do something for myself, and I'd be able to get an, an consistent stream of income it may not happen right away but in the process of me learning this youtube and everything like that in the process of of all that i'll be able to learn different things and make my own income and it isn't about all about the money it's just something that the meant the mentality of it you know (sighs) It, it just feel like a breath breath of fresh air because you know what it is to Go to a place, go to a job, nine to five, whatever the hours is, and you, your heart isn't in it anymore. You know that if you feel that way, you are in need of a change because sometimes you have to really go at your own pace to really find out what you what you really like in life, you know. And that's where I I was headed, and that's where I am at, at this particular time of my life. So my ju- my word of advice is to find yourself. It may not happen right away, and things may not go the way you plan it, because a lot of us may write down goals and uh, different things that we want to accomplish in our lifetime, but sometimes things don't happen. Speaking from experience, stuff is always going to come up in your way and obstacles and everything that you have to overcome. Back to the video. They took it from me. Uh, I don't feel like it was anything that was taken. Um, you know what God got for you is for you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I don't feel like nothing was taken. I feel like I may have thought things would happen a certain way. You know what I'm saying? Like, I've contributed to a lot of things. Uh, established relationships, brought people together. You know, big business deals, big ventures, all kind of, you know, publishing deals, all kind of things. And uh, me introducing these people. You know, you would think, like, hey, man, I want to be a part of the deal. Or, you know, y'all get on, man. Oh, that's my homie. When you get on, you know, I'll get you back. Or, you know what I'm saying? And that just had to happen 
tens of times for me to realize that one, I'm supposed to give, and I'm not supposed to. If you if you're giving, you're not supposed to expect. You're supposed to just give, right? Right. Right. And then uh, two, outside of that is, you know, when you do business, make sure you do business with the people that you work with. So right. it's an agreement. Like, hey, Craig, man. When I get done with the show, man, I need half or whatever. Da, 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 yeah, da. Yeah, yeah. At least if you say the conversation, you know, as uncomfortable or comfortable as it may be, you can get that established, you know, opposed to right, breaking right. up and having all kinds of bullshit that happens. You know what I'm saying? Man, definitely. So, like, what was that time where you felt like, oh, this might be it, and then it got snatched from you? But before you got to the point where you are now, and you, you know what I mean? Oh man, this had to be 1999. Signed the two short records. Oh, you signed the two short records. Signed the two short records. I knew I was going to drop. I'm 26, 99, and uh, short had his label being distributed by Jive, in which uh, he had two releases dropping on the label. The mine was the third one, so I was about to come out. Yeah. And Jive pulled the fucking distribution out from up under us and kind of fucked me up. Oh wow! So you should just be a rapper. Yeah. Wow. What did you go by when you were driving? Oh, Slink Capone. Oh, okay. Uh, I had to drop Capone because I realized, you know, that that nigga probably didn't even like like me. Yeah, I'm Capone. I used my grandpa, man. <laughs> Why? What was, what was the name of the album? Oh, The Cuddle Up. The Cuddle Up? The Cuddle Up. C U T A L U F L. Okay, I thought it said the cut it up. Okay. <laughs> 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 We're gonna talk about the spot. It's the spot. It's a spot. It can be a physical spot. Guys, that isn't my audio. If we, if you, if you are listening to this, that is not my audio. That is in my audio. If you, if you are wondering what is that, I think that is on Craig Smith end because I've been hearing a little something in my ear and. It's just, it's not me guys, it's not me, just know that Craig Smith uh, has been having a little issues with his audio with the podcast, I just wanted to point that out, okay? I can do a place, a cool ass, ducked off low key spot, yeah. that's a monster. <coughs> <coughs> okay, I gotta check, is it somewhere where I can download it? Probably on YouTube, somewhere. Man, how you hook up with Too Short, being from L.A. and from the Bay? My cousin's cousin. Oh, okay. Yeah, so that was that. My cousin, he baby. Short is his cousin. Oh, so wow. Now he's my cousin. Yeah, that's a beautiful situation. And a lot of y'all don't know, man. We all started off doing something different. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I, mean, I, I was like, before that, I, I was playing a... <coughs> Before that, I was playing left pistol for the Eaglewood carjackers. It has to suck being a, a really tall street name. In my humble opinion, I really don't feel too comfortable with everyone coughing like that. I I, I would have feel uncomfortable in that in, in that environment. You know, we don't know what type of diseases are there right now, and we just, we are still going with this pandemic, COVID situation, so I still would have my antenna up a little bit, if persons were coughing like that, you know? Yeah, man, because every time I got cracked, they always put me in the line of a little show that has me. Yeah, man. Oh man, that's been the game. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, so let's talk about it, Mars. Uh, what has disappointed you about music? Were you like, I never knew that this would be involved in this shit, but I got to deal with it. Um, bad business. And um, I was having this conversation uh, the other day. Uh, the short version is basically. You can do a song right now, right? And somebody pours milk on the floor and it goes viral on TikTok. So now you got the newest song. Now all the labels, everybody put the you know, song out. So I produce the beat and you the artist. I have everything come out. You can literally, because you own your own business and because you're the person that you know went viral, you can literally handle the business how you want to handle it. Right. So you can say, Oh man, you just was my homie, man. 
You know what I'm saying? Like, right, 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 right. You ain't gonna get nothing. And I'm like, what? And now I gotta fight for it. And you just on tour, and I'm trying to catch up. You <laughs> lost right. your number. And you told me change your number. All kind of just wow. all on the vibe, like. Yeah, let's go. I'm hearing my song every day, and my son is like, Daddy, I like this song. <laughs> I remember oh, the oh, 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 stuff that happens like that every day where the other people that are doing the business don't think about it. They can control it because, you know, we're, we're now entrepreneurs because of a laptop or because of, you know what I'm saying, TikTok or these discovery apps. So I say bad business is like the worst thing that I've encountered, you know, to make me not even want Oh, wow. You know what I'm saying? What surprised, what, did you, what, what surprised you about Jay-Z the first time you worked with him? Uh, the fact that he called us. <laughs> no, really? Well, yeah. So when he heard, he heard some music, was like, I'm going to reach out to these niggas. Um, well, yeah, kind of. I mean, we did it. It's, it's a funny story. Uh, uh, try to be real brief. We did Show Me What You Got for Jay-Z, like, way back in the day, whatever. 2006 or something. I don't want to go. Show me what you got, little lady. Show me what you got, little lady. Y'all get these. So we didn't go out because everybody was on the crib. My cousin told me he did that beat. I didn't know what the hell Everybody got a cousin. So, I never really told the story like this. So, basically, just Blaze enlisted us to like play on the on, on the uh, record. So, you know, Jay Z got on the song. It was amp. I remember where I was at when I got to call the whole thing. When I heard the record, he was like, "Yo, shout out to uh, Just Blaze and the Blaze X." <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, but him saying it in the booth, like he just you know saying like, "Yo, it sounds like a band," like the uh, you know. Obviously, Just ain't gonna be like, yo, 1500, some kids, I don't fuck with you from LA, you should talk them out and go out, you just let them do the rest of it. So, fast forward to uh, the B Sides concert. So, we've been like working, and the song with Nip, that's a whole other story, but the song that uh, Nip got with Jay Z, we did that song like years ago too. Right. So, around this time, Jay Z basically just hit us up and was like, yo, I'm doing a concert, you know, Google. You know, his the right hand man, that's our boy. So, like, you know, he did us like, yo, Jay wants y'all. He, he asked for y'all. Like, I ain't even run. He wants y'all to do the, the title thing. So, that was the surprising thing. And then, like, while we was uh, performing, you know, if anybody sees me or knows me from performing, like, I lose my shit every time I perform. So, while we're performing, Jay Z is like, yo, I just wanted to shout out uh, the best band in the world. I put this band above any band. Yeah. I put this band above any band in the world. Oh, wow. And I just start thinking about all the bands yeah, that he's yeah. had albums with, that he works with, yeah. people that we know. I know the rules was mad. I don't reach you back. What the fuck you play this, man? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so for him to say, yo, 1500 is nothing, you yeah. know, I put the, you know, it's been him to shout us out from that. It's just like, sometimes you just gotta stay down. Because we could have been dudes like, yo, man, tripping on, you know. Yeah. But. Yeah, he's Sometimes you gotta just stay down. Even yeah. though Jay Z flossed Rance, he did floss Rance. He did. Jay Z was like, yo, I mean, uh, Rance was like, yo, there go Jay Z, let's go uh, press him and tell him, you know, we did show him what you got. And like, I just, I'm gonna read the wrong guy. Yeah, yeah. So I read the wrong, and my spirit was like, hell no! <laughs> 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 I'm just taking the time to do it. I'm like, mm, you can go. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I, I got you back. So he walked over there, like, yo, what's up, man? I'm Rance, but, uh, I'm Rance, uh, Fitz and Hannah, we did show me what you got. Jay was like, congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 I swear that isn't me, that is uh, my audio like that, that is Craig Smith audio, so please bear with that, I hope it doesn't last too long. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 
Okay, cool. Yeah, that's yeah. interesting. The motherfucker. Yeah, man. Yeah. Actually, yeah. I, actually, you know, I wrote half of all eyes on me. Yeah, Because I mean, you know, I was just in there. I was just in there freestyle. So they really write my name down. You, you know, wrote a Kobe right. song too, right? You wrote. <laughs> he wrote all Shaq and Kobe. Bill <laughs> <laughs> Jackson got a big stick. <laughs> uh, that's hilarious, man. Jay Z, man, that's such an iconic. Snoop Dogg and Jay Z are probably the most iconic figures in hip hop. Snoop for sure. And, and you work regularly with both, more regularly with Snoop. So talk about how you met Snoop and that friendship and how that developed. And how did you guys get him to trust you guys so much? Because I feel like he just let y'all just. I just feel like he got the ultimate trust in y'all, you know? Yeah, for sure. Um, uh, me personally, I didn't develop my relationship. I was like the last person to kind of come around Snoop and the camp. Uh, Terrace and Battle Cat, shout out to Terrace and uh, Battle Cat. Those are like the producers that, you know, they did Weekend Freaky. Right. You know what I'm saying? So we grew up listening to their yeah, labels and Love that. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going make sure catch, I'm going make sure cat no. <laughs> I didn't cross my team. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, that's how you told me I don't cross my team. So, uh, Cat and Terrace were playing the Snoop's band. So, like, you know, Rance got on with Terrace. Terrace, you know, brought Rance in uh, to play in the band. And um, I used to have a studio in North Hollywood. I just met this lady at the bank around and she was like, yo, da 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 da. I told her I did music. And she was like, yeah, yeah. Have the keys and blah blah blah. So I just used to be in the studio. You wouldn't smack her? Nah, nah, nah. I, 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 hey, you know what's so funny? I was 17, right? And then, like, I probably like realized like a year ago when I was telling this story, I'm like, yo, oh, she, she, she was trying to get it. I didn't even know. You know, it was like, I didn't even know. I wasn't even thinking, like, I'm just like, yo, I'm doing music. She was trying to get it. First class ticket to the fun fest. To Milk Mountain. Probably like it's a year or two. If you was Paris, if you was an elderly woman, <laughs> right, <laughs> and you had a young talented seventeen producer year old producer in one of your spots, how would you get him to lay down with you? Like what you'd give him mm. a studio, right? <laughs> studio, and then I'd, if he didn't take that bait, then I give him a car. Oh yeah, oh, wow. see, that's, okay. see that was see that was a car too. Oh, shit, nah. <laughs> that's a different story. She I, I probably would have known then. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. See, she should have just came in the room and pulled her teeth out and threw them on the table. <laughs> like this about to go down. Started staring with no hearts so, up. Anyway, long story short, yeah. we just on the grill. Look, anyway. <laughs> I got around. Uh, Rance came to, was coming to my studio, and the homies used to always come to the studio, and they was like, "Yo, you should come play your music for Snoop." And I never thought to even play music for nobody. Like, really? I just like making music just because I just like making it. Yeah. You know? I taught that nigga Rance how to play keys. Yeah, Rance. <laughs> Rance, Rance is no English when I met him. <laughs> all, all he spoke was Nigerian, and he was always musty. And then one day. I used to just, you know what I'm saying? He caught on. He started being clean. I <laughs> gave him a piano. Give him a piano. Got some soul. <laughs> now he's the most talented nigga on the planet. Shout out to Rance. Shout out to Rance. Oh, my God. Shout out to Rance. Nah, yeah, so that's, you know, that's how I kind of uh, came around. And I would just go to rehearsals and stuff. And um, the first rehearsal that I had with Snoop, I was just like, you know, yeah, like we know on this West Coast, I'm like all the music, everything. I was just ready, right? Mm -hmm. So we get we get to the end of the rehearsal, and Dog is like, he starts singing like James Brown or like mm. Cameo or something crazy. So old, huh? Yeah, he like, see, y'all niggas don't know that, huh? He's like, yeah, cause y'all up in here, y'all know the West Coast music, but nigga, y'all don't know. No, y'all can, y'all draws it down, get your shit together, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know. So that was the first time I was like, damn, this nigga's a musician. He's not just a rapper. And then two, like, I'ma make sure I know, every, make sure I'm on my shit. So right. whatever he do, whatever, anybody, you know. And yeah. I compare this just for production as well as, you know, live performances, so. This is how dope Snoop is across the board, right? Is, and how iconic he is. You forget that he's a crip. 
<laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, I, I can't I, say I, that. I, 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 I can't say that. We know. I say this. I say this. He made Crippin more appealing. Right. He brought mm -hmm. Crippin. He, he he made Crippin palatable for the household. You understand? Know he, he brought he brought humanity to Crippin because at one point. <laughs> I think I know what he's trying to say is that because Snoop is such a big icon, the the thought of him being a quote unquote gangster gangster, like a bad person, I don't think we register that with Snoop Dogg. That's what he's trying to say. Monsters, uh, right? Let, let let Middle America tell the cripples monsters. You know what I'm saying? Now you got Snoop, this guy everybody loves, but hey, honey, he. He's he's a, he's he's a crip, but he's cool. Right, right. He's well, cool. He's not gonna kill us. You know yeah, what I'm saying? He's a cool crap. No, he's that's cool why crip. a lot of people became crips. Yeah, yeah Snoop made it fashionable. Sure. But that's well, this is what I learned from Snoop. Beyond you, just gotta be dope at what you do. Is just do what you do, nigga. Exactly. Right. Don't worry about all the excess noise and people telling you you gotta do it this way. Or Scott, nah, nigga, just do what you do Facts. to the fullest. And if you don't put enough. A way will be made. Facts. Mm. And you know, and that's that that's so fucking true because before I made my pilgrimage to Senegal, <laughs> you know, <laughs> a lot of people were shitting on me. They were saying ain't no future in that. And you need to stay over here and just go to trade tech. And I was like, fuck, that. I'm going to Senegal. Right. I went to Senegal, went over there and studied a little bit up and down the west coast of Africa. And goddamn it, if I ain't the five time wild cheetah submission whole champ. Uh -huh. uh -huh. uh -huh. uh -huh. Wild yeah. cheetah. Yeah. Five yeah. Five yeah. Five yeah. Five wow. Hey, let me ask you. Wow. Hey, let me ask y'all a question though, man. I do tree talk on the show. Both of y'all fuck with Snoop, man. Your yeah. stories. What's it like smoking with Snoop, man? Is it? What the stories they be giving us, all that crazy shit, or I don't know. I don't know what story, what stories they be giving you. I shit, I know what it's like when I smoke. That nigga be shit. We both got it's a gas super party. hot. Yeah, that's we what both I'm got fire. Yeah, I'm gonna tell you, man. He taught me how to smoke. You know, know what I'm saying? Yeah. He taught me how to know what the fuck is weed, and what what's the bullshit, and what you know what I'm saying? What's the party weed? What's the the shit that you smoke? The shit you hold on to? The shit you don't give everybody? You know, right, yeah. right, right, right. I've sparred with Snoop on several occasions. <laughs> he said <says, laughs> spar. <laughs> spar. <laughs> I, like I, I sparred with Snoop on several occasions, and Snoop is a very formidable opponent. And I found that Snoop, he do shit like this. See, Snoop got an a, a endless supply of weed, right? Right. So you going to get caught up in the whole allure of smoking with Snoop. Don't let it be at the compound, in the massage chair. He going to fuck you up. This nigga got fresh fruits, blueberries and shit, pistachios, all types of you nut, nutty buddies, all types of the shit you like, little candies, all that shit. So you get caught up in all that shit. And Snoop likes some weed. He not going to go blunt for blunt with you. He going to like some weed pass it to you, and once he hit it and pass it off, it's done. Yeah. And you look again, he got a whole new one. <laughs> <laughs> so he got an un un unlimited magazine full of blunts. <laughs> <laughs> man, Hilarious. it don't stop, man. And it, his blunt is always new. That nigga blunt don't never get shorter than this, man. Wow. <laughs> How the fuck, bro? Hilarious. Yeah, that's, that's some dark shit. Smoking with Snoop. So let's talk about working with another iconic artist, Beyonce. I seen that so, on the list, right? Beyonce, I got, I got some shit. Like we've done some shit, but I haven't personally worked with her. I washed her car one time. That's <laughs> Let's talk about Chris Brown. Oh my God. Okay, so Chris is a multi-talented dude. What's that process like? What, what makes Chris different than all the other icons? Um, shit. I feel like he's the best male artist, performer, dancer, you know, singer of our time. Uh, and then, like, for me to be able to meet him uh, when he was first, like, you know, coming into, you know, after the after the first album, you know what I'm saying? Like, when he was growing up and trying to get on some shit, you know, and for me to have, like, the song that kind of defined that moment for him right. was, was dope. So, like, our relationship has always been uh, cool. I think, when what year was that, uh, that Take You Down came out? Like, 2000? So that shit like that all shit the blur, right but yeah, yeah mm -hmm. like when that came down, came came out, you know, we established a cool relationship. And I seen him one time at the at the Grammys, and something happened. Like I, I didn't have my cash yet, and I got outside, and the security was tripping. 
And then Chris got out the, you know, the truck and was walking in, like, yo, Mars, like, oh, no, Mars, he with me, like, da 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 type yeah. shit. So I, I, ever since then, I was like, you know, on some, like, all right, this nigga cool. Man, I, I, I can't say the same. There it is. Man, yeah. Chris is, Chris is hey. And then he tried to blackball me, man. Well, <laughs> so this is we, had, we had a dance off at, uh, on, the of, <laughs> on the set of Run It video. You know, it's just man <laughs> on the floor, ready. You know? <laughs> And I fucked him up. I mean, it wasn't that many people out there. It was like, it was like before the camera, like the media got all big like that. But he knows what's up. Yeah, because I'm about to say, I ain't see you in that motherfucker. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be off the set. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Well, I'm gonna say Christopher. Christopher, I call him. Call him Christopher, nigga. That nigga stole some skinny jeans or something. Yeah, no. Stole nine pair of them motherfuckers. Skinny jeans. <laughs> That's funny as well. Shout out to Chris, man. Yes, sir. I agree with you. I think that he is the most talented artist of this, of this generation, by far. Um, Talk about his process, dude. Does he do something unique that other artists you work with don't do that separates him? Like, what's different about his process? Or he just get in there and just knock shit out? He just, I, I would just say, like, uh, he, he's super hands-on with everything. Like, you know what I'm saying? And he just, just super creative, bro. Like, he's an artist. Y'all ain't seen him, like, the paintings and shit that he be, mm. like, that shit is crazy, but. Yeah, yeah. Just one day, he just woke up and just knew how to paint. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? And he paint his whole house, his tour bus, wow. all kind of shit. He's he crazy, bro. He, like, really, really, like, you know. Eclectic. Forward, forward thinking, you know what I'm saying? He like, a forward thinking, exactly. Like, eclectic, abstract type shit. Who's the most talented person you work with that didn't make it? He was like, damn, I can't that believe it. That didn't make it? He was like, I can't believe they didn't get to that. <laughs> but if they didn't make it, then you wouldn't know them, right? I'm OK. It could be somebody. It could be a base head in the neighborhood. You, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? You know what I mean? We all know somebody who's like, God, it's a nigga named Victor, man. You know what I mean? It's an artist that I was working with. And um, you know, I brought him around. Like, all the people we talking about, not Chris, not Chris Brown, but like, you know, he was in the studio with Nip, you know what I'm saying? Because we had a studio together. He, I brought him around Snoop. I brought him around, you know, a lot of a lot of different rappers and shit. And um, he was a rapper and shit. And he just, like, people want shit right now. Right. You know what I'm saying? And he just kind of, like, just like, hey, hey, man, I don't know. I don't know what we're doing. Like, you ain't doing nothing for me. Like, da-da-da, I'm out with type shit. Which is cool, yeah. but it's just, like, it's so unfortunate, you know he what I'm saying? He wants the instant gratification. Bruh, you know, I, you understand I, I, the, the work that go into this shit. Because a lot of times, by the time we hear the motherfucking rappers and shit on, on the mainstream level, or when they reach that level, by the time we hear the motherfuckers, the motherfuckers have been going about five, seven facts. years already. Before, you know what I'm saying? So facts. That's real spill. It takes take time to get to it. And it's fucking 200,000 artists loading up songs every Friday. Right. You know what I'm saying? How, how are you, how you going to be seen? You got to be consistent. What is he consistent. doing now? I don't know. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? that's the point. That's just God, may God bless him. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, that's what I'm saying. It's unfortunate for a lot of people because, you know, they want microwave blessings instead of other, you know what I'm saying? Oh, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I want that slow shit, man. Give me, that, give, me that, give me that oven cook shit, man. Because <laughs> it lasts longer, man. Yeah. That microwave, I, be, I be tripping off that microwave generation, man, because, you know, again, when you, get, when, you, when you flip as many calendars as I done flipped already, you see shit a little bit different, man. And that little hot two years, motherfuckers be hot. That shit don't be nothing, man. You know what I'm saying? That's because they came and got it. I trip off so many rappers that I'm seeing so many new rappers, like, talking about they got a hit song, and you, the reporter asked them, like, how long you been rapping? Oh, I just started, like, last man, year. Like, yeah. whoa. Wow. Like, damn. And that, I mean, I ain't hating on your success and you hitting right now, but your, 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 your longevity's in question, man, because mm -hmm. you getting put, not to say that you can't, you know, progress and be a, a great artist or whatever, but your fucking learning, your formative years are on blast in front of everybody. Right. Right. You ain't got no room for mistakes. That's mm. some real shit. Right. I That's know right. for me, before I ever told a joke, I had five albums. Mm. And I started comedy. <laughs> yeah, a lot of motherfuckers don't know, I got five yeah, albums. Yeah, five well, I got yeah. about to be seven now. Yeah. So, I say all that to say, <laughs> I dropped another album just because it was a pandemic. Mm. But it was an 11-year span between that album and the one I dropped at the beginning. Hey, 
hey guys, we gotta react to that. And I'm thinking about doing that very, very soon, reacting to Craig Smith's album. If I find it on YouTube, I will present it to you guys. And we will talk about it, you know? Have a little fun discussion. The pandemic, and it was a lot of motherfuckers who didn't know I did that. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, you got to keep cultivating whatever it is that you believe in and just keep doing it. Because like you said, the blessing to come, but you want to, what you want, a microwave blessing or an oven-baked blessing? You know what I'm saying? Cultivate and reinvent if you have to. Understand mm. that. Reinvent you if you have to. It has nothing to do with uh, 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 giving up your dream or compromising your your your, your dream. Mm. It's just reinventing and, and re recalculating, reformulating. Because if, if I had it my way, I probably would have came and went by now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And now I'm just happy to still be here in 2022 and, and just blessed that, you know, I got people that fuck with me from generations, you know, mm. demographics, you know, with the game. I got kids as young as eight, nine years old who know my name and, 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 and people up to, you know, in they well into their 60s and up, Damn. you know, familiar with me. So I appreciate that, man, and instead of just being some, you know. Right, man. right. No, that's some dope mm. stuff, man. And the real talent gonna shine through eventually. Hey. You know what I'm saying? Craig. Yes. I didn't know it was that long of a, of, a, of a window. What made you come back? Like you said, it was 11 years. What made you say, you know what? I'm not done with this shit. Let me get back here and knock this chill withers out. Man, that pandemic started and I was in the crib. We couldn't do shit. Remember when it first got cracking? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I thought it was over. Nigga, I ain't gonna lie. I thought the space aliens was gonna come. <laughs> 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 Nigga, think about how long we've been alive. I'd never heard of no uh, right. shit with, right. you know what I'm saying? Right. Right. Yeah, yeah, I thought yeah. it was pretty they Mad down. Max when that first yeah. shit yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. I thought it was the, the population about to be decimated. <laughs> right. What the fuck is going on? Oh, and yeah. then I ain't gonna lie, you know what I'm saying? What the art of stand-up comedy did for me as an MC is it helped me dig deeper than I would have dug if I was just a rapper. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. as a comic, you, you're supposed to get vulnerable. Mm -hmm. You feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But in the hip hop shit, and he can attest to that, it's a whole different vibe. Like people, they buy more into uh, a bravado. The a bravado. But as a comedian, if you just a bravado nigga, you whack kind of. Because motherfuckers going to be like, OK, well, you a cool nigga, tough nigga, but who, who are you for real? Mm -hmm. So comedy helped me answer that question that would normally only be uh, known by the people that know me closely. So mm -hmm. it gave me the ability to to um, to connect with people on a more emotional level mm -hmm. um, than I would have probably been capable of if I was just a rapper. That's fine. You, yeah. you feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And um, I think that's why Tupac and niggas like that, are, you know, Tupac and DMX were so successful because they possess that talent that is really not often wanted in uh, in hip hop. I mean, Nipsey had that ability. Absolutely. Yeah. He was on his way down that path for sure, but. It takes a special nigga to do that because Kendrick, yeah, I, Kendrick, Kendrick right is, now, is right, right yeah. now, that album yes. you got right now, is crazy. Like, it's, that ain't vulnerable. Yes. No. Ah, man. That motherfucker ain't yeah. It's a masterpiece. Mm -hmm. So, everybody got a weird talent. Where, like, if they told people, motherfuckers would be like, damn, nigga, you could do that. Like, I knew this girl who could dig in her booty and her fingers wouldn't stink, right? <laughs> and this is <laughs> <was> amazing, <laughs> right? <laughs> right. <laughs> it's weird talent, you know what I'm saying? She put her own finger in her booty and, out, and it wouldn't smell like nothing, right? So she, so, she was letting y'all smell it first? I used to smell it all the time. Yeah, she was walking into you like, smell it all the time. <laughs> Smelly. That was our greeting. She would drop her pants and bam and, and give me a, a stink mustache. So, uh, <laughs> what's, your, what's your weirdest talent? Anybody got a talent? You're like, man. Nothing close to the booty. I'm not saying, nigga, I'm not saying you got to say it. You kick it off with that. That's what I'm saying. My weirdest talent would probably be writing poems. Um, in the past, I started just writing, you know. I used to do that a lot. I haven't did it in a long time, but I just, I used to write poems and put it in the book and stuff like that. That's my talent that nobody knows like that. Man. Uh, my weird talent, I know how to do origami. Oh, that's I can make a, a motherfucking uh, a swan out of a piece of sandpaper. 
That's a tough ass swine. One of my dead homies, rest in peace, Takeshi, he was Japanese and black. And he was a weirdo like me, and he would be in the crib teaching himself origami and different languages and shit, and we was neighbors. So he taught me, and we had the same uh, birthday. So he would teach me, like, you know, shit like that. Rest in peace, TK, we still love you. Anybody got any talent, like, just weird as a motherfucker like that? Sonny, how did you turn a fruit roll up into a jacket? You see the strawberry seeds in the shoulder? They got two lipstick pockets on it. That, 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 that's a normal thing. Cannibal it's squeaking. Right. It's squeaking. It's squeaking. It's no weird talents? <laughs> Fuck it. All right, we're going to go to a... Uh... <laughs> you nigga is boring. <laughs> Next up, security camera fails. Check it out. <laughs> Ex-Marine rigs package with flashbang. I knew you been stealing my shit. Okay, Man, this video here is viral. I've seen it on um, YouTube shorts. Oh man, <laughs> you can actually hear the the anger in the guy's voice. You can tell he's been stealing his stuff. <laughs> he's been stealing his stuff for a very long time. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Shot himself. Yeah, they're on the way. Yeah, oh, I think I'm going to go. Damn. 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 He must have she ain't that far. No. Oh, my. No. Oh, Mary J. Blige. How did that happen? Um... Working with the underdogs. I was working with the underdogs, and um, those are the producers that um, I worked with when I did Take You Down. Yeah. So they were working on her album, and um, they called me to work on this song. I was like, yo, we're working on this Mary song. We want you to come in and help, you know, blah, 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 blah. I just, I did a couple notes, and you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I'm the type of producer, like, or a type of person, rather, if I'm like honest in what I hear, you know what I'm saying? So like, if I, if I, the first thing I hear, I'm gonna go with that. And then if it's something that doesn't work, I'm gonna just keep, you know, right. you know figure out what work. But the song was pretty much kind of already complete. I just needed, to, you know, it just needed like some sprinkles and shit. Like. Mm -hmm. Right, 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 right. Okay. Oh, you put that flavor on it. Yeah. But I knew my mom would like that one, so I was like, all right, fuck it. Very good. Very good. You got a chance to see her up close? Nah, nah. Oh, okay. Because I know he, Snatch wanted to ask about her, spank, her spanker. <laughs> <laughs> I seen her in concert, and I was in her the nosebleeds. <laughs> and I could see she had wagon from half a mile away. I didn't want to Dude, go. she really? Yeah, she got yours. Yeah, yeah. they got wagon. wagon. Yeah. Marriage, when Mary J, when Mary J ain't never had ass. <laughs> I'm like, what? Uh, I ain't saying I can't even talk. I'm like, what? what the but you know, some people. Yeah. You know, yeah. Eric, Eric about to do it. Took us a minute to find that out. I didn't know. Yeah, I remember we were in the studio. She was doing the Share My World album. <laughs> 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 What's the most famous uh, broad
The more, the more, I don't holler at them. I, I mean, I meet them, but I, I don't holler at them. Probably Queen Latifah. You heard hey. Queen? Is that right? Years ago, <laughs> way before I was, I was a security guard. Oh, okay. Yeah. Wow. How was she dressed? She had the goofy on or just after the goofy? She was a good girl. This is this is Yeah, she had my overall and something. She had on a dicky suit. She was the one. She, she was the one. She was on a date and she was the one opening the car door. Yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> but I still I still had to say something. Yeah. What you say? Like, what's happening, nigga? <laughs> <laughs> That's my nigga, man. That's my nigga, man. Lady Royce, you hear my Royce, you nigga. I know you got some fire on, baby. I know you do. We did. I actually did a song. I actually did a song with her and Ti. That nobody knows about. Yeah, yeah. Just on some Queen King. Yeah. Hey, 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 he said that's yeah. the hell of a combination. Like, why don't you think that? Ass? <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask you that though, man. How much music you got, or are you? Can you talk about the from artists that like these songs that probably have never seen the light of day? Like that's crazy. I know you got some like some music with big artists that probably you know. Yeah. I mean, not really. Not not a lot. Like, not a lot of artists. You know what I'm saying? Not a lot of music from a lot of artists, like, cause I really like I'm at I'm at a point now, thank God and humbly speaking, that I just like working with people that I like working with. You know what I'm saying? So I don't, that's why you ain't answer my call. Yeah, but now nah, like. Of course, a lot of music with Nip, you know what I'm saying? Uh, music with Snoop, Davies, you know what I'm saying? People that we fuck with, like, you know, we got a lot of music with, but uh, the other artists is you like. You send it to my email? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no. I don't think it worked like that. Hilarious. Talk about Lupe Fiasco. A lot of people consider him, you know, possibly the best lyricist yeah, he got bars, of this generation. He's definitely one of the top guys. Shout out Lupe. Lupe is Lupe is dope, man. That's my bro. Um, a lot of stories with him, but uh, I'll just say, like, he's a dope artist. We were one of the, uh, how can I say? I would just say, like, we enhanced his show when we met him. You know what I'm saying? And, like, we both, like, Enhanced each other. You know oh, so you play live for him? Yeah, we was okay. his band um, for like probably like five years or something like that. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. yeah, so the did. whole 1500 and nothing crew? Yeah. So this is when he was, uh, if you are. Yeah, yeah. If you are. So, uh, around. so if you like look at any of that, if you, if you look at any live performance from that song, you'll see me jumping around on the keyboard and shit, like jumping up over the keyboard. With, put, Playing with my feet and all yeah. kind of crazy shit. Mm. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah, like we be, we, we was wild. So, um. That's <laughs> it. Yeah, that's it. That's the hidden talent you were So, um, yeah, I guess people can learn that. You know what I'm saying? That's the talent. <laughs> most that's famous um, chick you tried to highlight. Not smash, but you're like, I got to. I'm that I tried to or that I've been with? Hey, not the Ethel Winslow story you told me, but I'm just trying to get out. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm this girl I tried to holler at. I don't think I, I don't think there's anybody that I tried to holler at that I didn't like end up dating. Oh, is that right? Mm. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. I'll be striking out with celebrity women. Yeah, yeah, I've been in Lizzo's <laughs> inbox for yeah. 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 She got to accept the request. Yeah. Yeah. Imagine what that room smelled like after you finish smashing her. Oh, my God. Damn. Yo, you got to see it. Sweet. You got to see it. Honey What are you talking about? You got to shoot your shot with some neck bones. Yeah, Will Smith trying to holler at you. Oh, wow. Can I get a picture with him? Did Randomly you? at the W Hotel Westwood. This was around when Obama was kind of. She was already at the hotel. Yeah. Okay. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. 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 Where was Jada? Hey, <laughs> Jada probably took it. She probably said Will. Yeah. 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 Ye
I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all like that's dope. Man, that's crazy. You gotta explain it. Yeah. That's <laughs> amazing. I got shot down. I don't even want to talk about it. Like Jada? Oh, man. What y'all talking about? I tried to holler at Beyonce. Oh. Uh, yeah. yeah. How recent you know, was Maya, that? Maya got at me one time. I was, Maya's so cold. Yeah, she had hollered at me. I, she was like, what's up? Come through. I was, I was having a bad day. That day. I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. You turned her down? Yeah. Not today? Not today. Yeah, you, <laughs> work with Maya, you work with Maya a lot. How'd you and Maya meet? <laughs> That's my partner. Did she ever talk about me in the studio? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. Not that I can remember. <laughs> How do we meet? Uh, uh, my lawyer at the time, no, my publisher at the time, had, uh, said that she was doing a writing camp. And I was like, bro, I don't do writing camps. Like, if they want to work with me, they want to work with me, whatever. Right. He was like, so that's like a camp for writers? Everybody pay their money? And it's like, nah, you don't pay. It's like, um, say, you know, you're the artist. You do a camp, and then... You know, we're all the producers. You have all these producers and songwriters in here. We all, you know, in here for you. So I might be playing a beat or I might got to wait until him be play a beat or we might be forced to make beats together. We might not like you. It's just, you know what I'm right, saying? Right, it's right. just, I don't know. Yeah. That's crazy. That's not my vibe. But anyways, I just was like, fuck it. Like 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 like. Man, play, please man for my shit, man. Please. <laughs> what you got? <laughs> it's like, what you got? But I mean, a lot of them are like creative. It's supposed to be like creative, you know what I'm saying? Like studio sessions. Right. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Where all the songwriters come together. But yeah, um, I ended up going and then, you know, it was just us and I was like very, you know, at the time I was kinda like more how can I say? Uh, I was just more adamant and just like kind of just nonchalant about right, it. You right, know what I'm right, saying? Right, right. I was just like, yo, all right, so this is the tracks that I got for you. These are the songs I got for you type shit. You know, not like that while I wasn't excited, but it was just like I knew. And she was like, um, I don't really like the, I wouldn't say bitch. I, I, I don't cuss and da 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 da. No, she and then, she yeah, and then I went into like <laughs> me being like, well, I mean, shit, I think you could at least say this or da 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 da, you know what I'm saying? Or at least try it. And she's like, yeah, no, no, no. So, like, by the second or third day, we was like super cool, super locked in. She a Libra. We found out we was, you know, both Libras. And, uh, you know, like everything was just coming. And then she ended up doing the song and the song came out fire and then ended up being like one of her song favorite songs that she was she like yo i like the song yeah. like, duh, duh, duh. you know she still changed a couple words but you know yeah, yeah. she always been so sweet that, that, <laughs> that's why i shot it down because at that time i was real hard on my pimping and cooking so i didn't you know i didn't really i didn't want to bring that to her life like that she wasn't ready for it but i'm yes. i'm ready now it wasn't breaking i'm ready now you yeah. yeah. wasn't breaking hearts at the time yeah. shout out to my man shout out to we got next album on the way you call her that too that's crazy my. <laughs> <laughs> Don't grab the last letter. <laughs> my. You, you ever holler at a famous chick snap? Nah, man, I ain't no. getting nothing. Nah. You know that. niggas ain't gonna tell, man. They gonna tell you. I didn't know. Cola Lope from Doggy's Angels. Cola Lope. Yeah. Damn. I didn't know. I thought she was just some, some regular chick that I'm I tried to buy a cigarette. She was. <laughs> <laughs> she tried to buy a cigarette. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got a chick. <laughs> Cola Lope, they come out. He's like, no more. He's like, oh. <laughs> what, what happened? Huh? What happened with Cola Lope? So there was a there was a party, man. It was like, a, uh, it was like this industry porno party, right? Right. And um, at the end of that, right? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> what does so you mean? Everybody in the industry was doing no, porno. It was like it was, uh, it was called Sex in the Studio. It was like a, it was supposed to be a, a mashup what? of the industry, like Money B and the porno chicks. Featuring Darkest Angels. Hey, and the nigga, he find out that information. Yeah. The update don't never be in writing. The update comes straight to his head, yeah. man. Yeah. <laughs> was Africa Bombada there? <laughs> no, I'm saying this is... India, you want to... India, y'all are on the VHS stage. Y'all don't know. They got fucked in front of a lot of niggas in the industry. Is that what you said? <laughs>
I went to a party. To, she stepped. She stepped on my shoe at the end of the night. So I tried to, you know, I told her. Yeah, that means something. She's yeah. cute in person. Did she know? ask you where you was from? <laughs> nah, I thought she was a regular girl, like just a regular person. So oh. I'm like, yo, I got this TV show. You know, we doing this thing up in up in Pasadena, public access. She can come be on my show. Public access. Yeah. yeah. So was this '97? This is like. Uh, Maybe like two thousand or something like that. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, this is this was back in the back in the day. And so when she got to, she came to my house, I called her out late night. She's like, this sounds like some booty call shit. And I was definitely trying to be on some. She's gonna smash it. Some booty call. So she came, she came out. You went to her house. She came to my house. Oh wow, this nigga got the first base. Yeah, yeah, definitely got the first base. She, she was talking about can I bring a friend? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> she, was, she was like, can I bring a friend? I'm thinking that since I got the portal shit. Yeah. <laughs> Spitting bars all the way over yeah. there. <laughs> He got a cold loaf to the house, homie. Yeah, that's saying a lot. He's so tacky, Bobby. And tacky, man, Glizette. And a blue rag home. I was moving the motherfucker. I thought I had to go. the angle monitor. You had to win the fans for the pussy. Don't trip. I told him what we were going to be here tonight. So we'll get your pussy unless you hop it out. You can't hop me out, you can't have a pussy, cat. You smile. She makes him shoot. She makes him shoot the face for the pussy. He had to smash the off suit for it. That bitch told that bitch told Todd, don't walk me out from here. <laughs> don't she's like, don't tell the homies I was over here, okay? Yeah. Uh, oh put that dog food on, nigga. Put that dog food on. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's rather what happened. So she was like, she kept saying, let me play my music, I'll play my music, I'll play my music. Uh, you know, we was little rap niggas and shit, yeah. so I'm like playing my music, like, fuck your shit, you know, she's so yeah. listening to our shit all night. So we finally we in the car riding around and she play her music and I hear like this Nate dog sounding nigga. And I'm like, how do you get a Nate dog, nigga? She's like, that's that's Nate. Like, <laughs> 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 you? I think she's a regular girl like every night. Like, you got like, Nate dog. Like, you got Nate dog. Like, you got Nate dog. She's like, that's just like you. So I was instantly ready to give her some head at that yeah. point. Yeah. <laughs> When she said, got your backpack, I'm gonna say it. <laughs> when she said, my bro, it's not her to pull her dick out of her backpack. So. <laughs> when she said her group was doggy, and hey, you're not so scared. Yeah. 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 I put wine in these big ass thirsty two ounce cups, nigga. Like, oh, you was wine? Here you go, nigga. Half in this cup. Here. I start thinking about Big C style and all these type of things. What you do to the home, girl? Who's the star? Did you tell East Wolves? I don't tell them. Oh, the fuck? Trey D, all right. You are out here at midnight and ain't no joke. You didn't hit one of those. I was so scared, bro. Did you get it? No. I didn't even want it no more. I was going to treat her like shit. I was already on some scumbag shit. I met at a porno party. And she said, I'm bring the You forgot the first part. You forgot the beginning. So she's about to bring a friend. I'm thinking it's about to be some threesome shit popping yeah. off. And then she brought Rage. Yeah. Nah, no, you're gonna get a dice gang going. Like, bring your boy, man. She's got some more. Shout out to Troll Love. Shout out to Troll Love, man. Y'all follow her on Instagram. She's still a friend. Shout out to Troll That's a great story. She's still a friend. I don't know. Okay, you know, so you, you, say, you, you ain't got to answer this question if you don't want to, Mark. You said pretty much every. You know, famous chick you shot at, you hit the target. Right, be color look. Yeah, but I, I mean, it ain't like. <laughs> <laughs> Whose pussy smell terrible that's famous? Oh, I mm. wouldn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I'm, glad, I'm, I'm, glad, I'm, I'm glad I don't know that. You know okay. what I'm saying? I wouldn't know that. <laughs> nah, but for first talk, first one you hollered at, and she gave you some play. Not necessarily that you had a sexual encounter with, but, but you was like, oh, wow, OK. She considered that. Yeah, um, that happened, man. Yeah, we will leave it right there. We will leave it right there. Nah, that's a Marshall Warfield. Yeah. Though. <laughs> like next up, car wrecks. <laughs> Check out these car wrecks. Oh, crack. Okay, this may be something that I have to maybe 
skip because of the YouTube policy and all showing violence and stuff like that so I love to pause this so I will skip it so yeah Dumbass kids, man. Loose pants. Master P. They basically showed videos like persons drifting in the road and their car being crashed into other cars and almost near death situations. I couldn't show that, but I think it could be found on YouTube. <laughs> Iconic figure in hip hop, oh. you know, one of the originators of taking the independent grind and taking yourself serious as a brand. The first person that came to mind, that come to mind, is Young Dolph. But I don't know who who he is going to say, but let's hear it. Man, how did that can? How did you connect with such an iconic dude, man? Like, how did Master P come into play? Um, uh, shout out to hum to the homie Fluff. Uh, Fluff is Ryan's cousin, and uh, some type of way, you know, he got him out to the studio, and uh, that's how, you know, I was around while we was doing records with Nip, and you know what I'm saying, they had, they developed and established their own relationships from that, um, but yeah, we, we were doing songs, and he would just come over there, just chop it up, and then, you know, pick tracks, like go through beats and go in the studio, rap, you know what I'm saying, he yeah. was just just organic, you know what I'm saying? But like you said, he's definitely iconic and you know, he's he was all about like entrepreneurial, you know, like plays and you know what I'm saying, just books and all kind of shit that we need we didn't know, right. you know what I'm saying, that we needed to know and he he did, he, he does it in the you know, spoon fed way. You know what I'm saying? In a way where, you know, it's easy to digest as opposed to somebody being like, yo, if you don't read these books and yeah. blah, 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 and somebody just saying shit, you're like, bruh. Yeah. Like, let's just work. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, I yeah. met that nigga back in Richmond. Uh, I used to sell him the ice cream before he was an ice cream man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, P seems like he would definitely be informative. Like, what? what's the most memorable thing he taught you or that he kind of took that from your interaction with him and you apply it to today? Ownership. Ownership for sure. Um, ownership and branding. You know, cause like, he was able to capitalize off the music from just branding himself. You know what I'm saying? Just no limit, no limit, no limit. Like all you knew was no limit. Dude. And clothing and yeah, you know what I'm saying? Everything. I think didn't he have his own shoe or something like that? Yeah, yeah. Master yeah. P didn't have yeah, yeah. You, you know what I mean? So it was he just had like, his own everything, man. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. nigga P had a car as supposed to say Master P. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he beat you in twenty one, right, Craig? Yeah, twenty twenty one. Yeah. <laughs> but you not dope at basketball. You dope at everything else though. There I get you is. on the court if you want the challenge. I'm challenging you, Pete, and I tell you. <laughs> Snoop, you can get it too on the court. You got a court at the cop file. What you want to do? You on your own. You on your own, though. You know what I'm saying? I already beat Barrett on his own court. Shout out to Barrett Davis. Tell Damn. everybody how I tested you at the cop on the court. Damn. Damn. I'm calling out all rapper Hooper. <laughs> Let's do it. Damn. Who won it? Damn. Little Bow Wow, what's up, man? Yeah, You're too small now, nigga. <laughs> No, man, that's dope. So, P, P taught you ownership. So, to a, a young artist or the young version of you, what does ownership mean? Like, because a lot of people don't understand exactly what that means or how to how, or how to position themselves to be the owner of a record that they do. Well, um, I would say it's just not records. I would say it just applies to life in general. Like. Um, I feel like my purpose, um, a lot of people can be inspired from, you know, me inspiring. And uh, my purpose is to, to give till I can't give no more and to uh, live a life that outlives me. You know what right. I'm saying? So that means, like, everything that I'm doing here is not just for me. It's for, you know, obviously my family. But if I'm not doing something to you know, educate other people or if I'm not, I'm not giving as much as I can, you don't want to, you want to die empty. You know what I'm saying? Right. So like, you know, it's a lot of people that you'll never hear their ideas. You never see any of the things that they wanted to actually do because they were so caught up in, you know, just doing the same routine every right. day. You know what I'm saying? So 
I would just say like branding and just knowing that your ideas are worth everything. Intellectual property is everything. So, you know, if we just sit an hour a day, you know what I'm saying? I challenge everybody in here an hour a day for a week to just sit and think about something that the world and our culture needs. And if you write that down, just write it down in your notepad every day. And then after a week, you'll have a list of all of these, all these different ideas that you can do. And then once you do it, once you do that, the second week, you start with the first idea. Right. All right, who do I know that can help do blah, 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 blah? Oh, I know blah, 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 blah. And then you'll just start seeing, you connecting the dots and you turn the energy and ideas or money, you know what I'm saying? So once you, once you turn your ideas into money, you're able to own your own ideas, you know, copyright your, you know, your stuff and LLC, S Corp, however you want, you know, want to do it, but make sure you own it. And you know you got leverage. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I think because you said something very uh, pivotal, like comfort. That's killing a lot of dope niggas off. Facts. That's a, heavy. A comfort is like <clears throat> comfort is like the purr for a cat. You understand mm. what I'm saying? Mm. But what a lot of people don't know is, in science, one of the reasons they think cats purr is to make their prey comfortable and lethargic. Because uh, I guess there's like a soothing aspect to it. Mm -hmm. We can get trapped in it, then they strike. You know what I'm saying? Are you, anybody ever been petting a cat that's purring and it just smack you in your face? Yeah. So that's what comfort no, is, man. You don't fuck with them? Can't say that. No, I don't fuck with them. My baby mama be growling like that. She be like, <laughs> <laughs> my baby mama bark. <laughs> she, bark <laughs> she come when I call her, too. I ain't got no <laughs> My baby mama do this. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just playing, I'm just playing. Yeah. Do you remember a time when your creativity started to make people who thought they knew you uncomfortable and you could see it like, oh, mm. this, un this is an uncomfortable space? Why I'm at is uncomfortable for them because they think I'm this. Man, that's who I am. Man, talk about that's it. That's like, that's every day. That's all the time. I don't, I mean, that's one of the reasons why I just work with my friends. Shout out to Mikey Keys, but like, Outside of that, you know what I'm saying? Like, if you're not sure in yourself, then, you know, you can see a lot of, you know, you can you can offend and, like, you know, you can offend people and not even know you're doing it, you know what right. I'm saying? Just because you're just so assertive and sure of yourself, you right. know what I'm saying? So um, I've learned how to, you know, be humble, like you, like you say, but, I mean, when it's my shit and, like, it's what I do, like, it's just like Jordan being on the court. Like, as soon as I'm in the studio, it's like, I'm fucking everybody up. I don't care who Straight ain't. Right. I don't care. You know, whatever producer, whatever musician, like, I'm I'm finna whoop ass. Like, you know what I'm saying? Hell yeah. Every yeah. time. So I, that's just my mentality. So, you know. It took me a while to get used to that because it's like, you know, a lot of times when people think you are a certain way as far as how you think, and then you step above that or what could be perceived as above that to them, um, it'd be like a shot to the ego. Because I be sometimes I'd be certain motherfuckers, you people, and it's almost like they had an attitude of like, how, how dare you? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And they're not going to say how dare you. they just going to say, uh, you be hating. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right, or, right, right, you know right, how right. niggas disguise right. uncomfortability? Yeah. Right. Right. Oh, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. On you. Yeah, honestly, he a bitch ass nigga. Yeah. He ain't. Wow. Create your system in your little head right there. Sometimes. A lot of people might perceive you to be something else because they judge you based on your past and everything like that. And instead of them really getting to know you, they would always say what you used to do and this and that and that and this. And sometimes it can become annoying, but as you get older, you can be more mature about it. You can distance yourself from all the negativity and you feed in all the positive energy like that. And sometimes it will be a surprise for them, but it do be like that though. You feel as though you're not being understood most of the time. But it takes time though. It takes time for them to realize it. And when they do, it's really, really a surprise. It's solid. That nigga think, and it's like, for all artists, that's the side of always having a standard for yourself that you have to be able to learn to deal with is the fact that some motherfuckers you love ain't going to get it. They may not get it to years Facts. down the line. They, you may fall off as friends because they'd rather die thinking you was a weirdo than thinking you was a genius. Facts. So they keep away from you because they don't want to bow down to the fact that I'm just working harder than you, nigga. I ain't better than you. Appreciate it. Right.
I'm just working harder, nigga. Why don't you give me props for, you know what I'm saying, working harder, nigga? So, yeah, don't look for those props, artists. You being a dope, she does, she's a ballet artist. World right. renowned. Mm -hmm. Dope. One of the coldest. We got a battle coming up, so. <laughs> Tune in. Tune in. I'm not, I want to see you in the I'm going to kill her off. <laughs> <laughs> so he says. I'm going to tell you, man. Uh, you were there? <laughs> I don't know, it's nuts. He was talking about how people hate on you and shit, and you know, won't really get your. That kind of happened to me because I was part of this one group, man. You know, our group was called Coming Up. Right. You know what I'm saying? And I was part of the group. We had this one hit song that had kicked me out. I was like, uh, I know you heard it. Girl, you dancing real close. They went on to say, thanks. Coming up. <laughs> you <laughs> it hard yeah, cause they, I was, that, I wrote that song. I was on the phone wow. with my little, with my little thing, thing. Yeah. And we was playing, yeah. and I was dancing with this little rat, and I was trying to talk to the rat. You know, them niggas, they was hating cause I had the vibes. Yeah. I had the vibes. Oh, and they went on to change the name of the group. I think coming up, coming up. Yeah. Come on, next. You can't even understand. Yeah. You just see next. You know. That's hilarious. <laughs> talk about the dance world, Paris, and the competitiveness, competitiveness of that world. And, maybe, you know, a circumstance that you beat that a younger dancer uh, could benefit from knowing how you, how you adjust it, you know? Yeah, it could, it could be like the, you know, sharks, uh, shark tank in a sense. Right. Where everybody, you gotta, we have to be in that space and everybody has to bring their best mm -hmm. and fake support or not. And um, the thing about dancing though, is you either have it or you do not. Right, right, you right. cannot fake your way through performance art. Right. And even the non-trained eye can get onto mm -hmm. it and say, nah, that's not, you're not doing it. Facts. Uh, so at the end of the day, talent wins. Like skill set does shine. Right, right. Yeah, I would think so, because I mean, especially doing ballet, that's a very technical thing, right? Extremely. Yeah, I, I just... I, you you know. remember, huh? When I, I taught you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've been working. The best is coming. The ballet is coming. You ever had anybody steal music from you? Yeah, of course. Okay, so... Mm. What happened? Like, how, when somebody steals a beat from you, or somebody steals a song from you, how do you get retribution as an artist? What's the process? Once you recognize that oh, this motherfucker stole my shit. Okay, it's two things. Um, two ways I go about it. One, <coughs> if somebody did something that's like worth, you know, like me actually, you know, calling my lawyer or something like that and like putting money behind it, you know, I would let that song get as big as it's gonna get. You know what I'm saying? Right. And make as much money as it's gonna get. Right. And right to right when it gets to the peak. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna call my lawyer and be like, yo, this, this is the song I did. I did it on this date. He got it from this blah, 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 blah. And they gone, you know. And it's, Resolution. yeah. And now I have to have whatever percentage of that song and they have to pay me whatever from the residuals and the money that's already been allocated. You know right. what I'm saying? The, uh, the other way is like, um, Anytime that you're the greatest at something, you're gonna always be imitated. Right. So mm -hmm. I always keep that as number one. So I always know mm -hmm. somebody's gonna like, you know, imitate something that I do because I'm innovative and I like being the first and you know at what shit. I'm doing. So anytime I anytime you're the first, it has to be a second. Right, right. So, you know what I'm saying? Man, that's it, that's, that's great dope. advice. Yeah. I know a lot of people are scared <clears throat> when they're new in the game to kick up dust about being stolen from because they feel like they're going to get blackballed and lose opportunities. It's like you making, it's like you making the best macaroni and cheese and you know your best <laughs> your macaroni and cheese is the best and you got the recipe right here. And I'm like, right, you know what right, I'm saying? Right. Take the snapshot and I'll open up a macaroni and cheese stand tomorrow. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It might be a million people at my macaroni and cheese stand tomorrow, but is you might open up a store a storefront the next week and then people are gonna slowly start stop going to my shit, start going to your know, shit. Somebody gonna taste something, mm -hmm. it's gonna be favorable publicity. And right. favorable publicity is the best pu publicity that you can have. That's right. word of mouth, that's without you saying nothing. You know right. what I'm saying? Right. And that's because you got the real shit. I, I don't know how to cook, how you cook it. I, I'm, I can have the same ingredients, but right. it's the same reason why we're supposed to teach and give. It's like, 
you know, if I learn something, I'll pass it on. But you know what I'm saying? Like, I could give you the same computer I got. I could give you all my sounds, everything. But the shit that I'm going to do is going to be totally different than the shit you're going to do. Completely different. Yeah. Good question. <clears throat> so, um, California Republic, right? Mm-hmm. Like, one, like, what was your favorite <clears throat> track that you guys did on California Republic? <clears throat> I don't really remember the track list or the songs. I just remember that era. Because I remember, I remember looking at. <laughs> You're talking about with game, right? Yeah, game. Yeah, yeah the mixtape California yep. Public, yep. and um, it was it was kind of a different style. But I remember seeing on the track list the the you guys as producers, mm -hmm. and those were like the songs that I would seek out. And those were like the best songs on the album. All right. Dope, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, I don't, I don't really. You gonna make me go back and listen to it? Yeah. <laughs> I don't really, man, I just be going, to be honest, bro. I just I just be, you know, making music and just keep going. Like, you know, people be reminding me of stuff. Like, uh, somebody said, said something earlier. Like, yo, uh, you Mars that did the uh, Mar uh, Martians versus Goblins? I'm like, oh, yeah, like, I did do this. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm like... <laughs> More so like that. Like I have to Google myself low key, like to, <laughs> to, you know, to see like, just, and not just like in a you know bragging way, but like more so just because one, I've been you know producing since I've been seventeen, and I'm thirty seven, so I've been literally producing for twenty twenty years, and that goes back to what you were saying, like. You have to evolve with the times. You know right. what I'm saying? You can't be complacent. So definitely. And what Slink was saying, you gotta reinvent reinvent yourself. You know what I'm uh, saying? Let me ask you a question. Okay. If you wrote a song, because you write songs, right? Yeah. Well, what would you title that jacket? Murphy is. Delirious. 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 The jacket, the jacket too small. Yeah. The jacket too small would be a whole song. I just call it the sweaty movie. <laughs> <laughs> it's a dead gummy bear jacket. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. 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 That jacket just had puppies. This is all the jackets at the house that look like that jacket in a box and they feed yeah. what, what, what would you feed that jacket if it was alive? Yo, this has definitely been alive before. This yeah. is algae. This is algae. <laughs> this jacket's made out of uh, wrestling ropes. I ain't on turnbuckle skin. Out of boxing gloves. <laughs> That's the greatest jacket ever, man. How much they charge you for that jacket? It came with a jerky jacket. It came with a Coke can. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. All right, we ain't gonna fuck with that jacket. Um, What producer just wows you? Like, every time you hear a production or artist they work with, and you, it's, and you just think to yourself, how the fuck do they just keep getting? Type producer that will be um, Pharrell, Pharrell Williams. I think that's his last name. He would be that producer for me because he he's been doing a lot of feats, a lot of different things between him and Kanye West. I'll have to put them too as one of the best so far. How do they keep getting dope now like? or live, uh, living or past? We could do both. We'll do past and we'll do past. Past Jay Dilla for yes, sure. Yeah. Oh, man. Oh, that's like wow. my major influence. That's what got me into producing. Like, he's the person that got me to start making beats. Um, uh, living. Uh, I'd say My Guy Mars. <laughs> yeah, here we go. Your Yay. favorite song you've ever done? <laughs> My favorite song. We we'll do uh, R and B and then rap. And then any, any other genres you've done that I may have. Mm, rap would have to be. Rap would have to be probably dedication. Okay. From Nipsey. Yeah, yeah. And then R and B. 
um, R&B. Yeah. I would go with either Kalani uh, Open or Strong uh, uh, or either uh, Take You Down by Chris Brown. Okay, so it's a lot of chemistry that goes into making dope music, especially the songs you feel like are at the top of the heap. So let's talk about what made the Nipsey song so dope. What's the story around that song? Like, how did y'all put it together? Was the beat already months old and just in the computer? Did, did you make a banger and Nipsey came in and it was like, that's the one? Like, how like how did that song come come together? Um, that specific song, yes, it was an old beat um, that I believe Keys has started from Mike and Keys initially. And then, um, you know, we just kept remixing, you know, uh, we had this concept. When I say we, I'm, I'm talking about uh, 1500 and uh, Mike and Keys. We had this concept. Uh, really, it was Mike and me and Mike and Keys because uh, we were we had a studio together. So every day we would kind of like listen to the songs and then take the acapella and and like act like we were act like the song was produced by somebody else and we would try to beat the song. Right. Mm -hmm. right. So like. We'll do a song with Nip, and then the next day he come. Uh, his, you know, his room is right here. We in this room, so like we, the next day we'll take the acapella. We'll be working on something. He be like, we'll walk in the room like, hey, cuz what is this? This shit sound fire. Like, nigga, this the song you did yesterday. You know what I'm saying? So that let us know, like, okay, cool, we got some energy, all right. So you like this shit better? You like hell yeah, like we, you know. But right. if we don't take the, you know, chance of like trying to beat ourselves, then, you know, we just gonna settle for whatever we do. Right, right. So, um, Kendrick was on that one too, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. like, that's how we kind of, like, the the uh, chemistry of the album, as well as that song was made. And then, um, uh, Mike, Mike, Mike uh, started doing his shit to it. Rance did his shit to it. They, re you know, did some sounds, and Rance added some keys, and, um, and by the time I heard it the last time, like when I was mixing it, Mike was like begging me to put, like, do something to the record. He's like, yo, this song is OD. You have to do something to it. I'm like, bro, it don't sound. Remember I told you earlier, yeah, yeah. like, I'm, if I, I'm gonna go with what I hear. And I was like, this song is perfect. It don't need nothing. And I'm not like the person, like, oh, I just wanna be on the song with yeah. Nip and Kendrick. Like, which 99.9% .9 of niggas would do. Just yeah. because nigga had a cat. Yeah. 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 But look, but let me tell you. So let me tell you. The thing, the trip, the trip is, it's niggas that it did that on on pretty much the whole project and got more percentages on the project than niggas that then did contribute it right. and really wow. been in the studio. Uh, so like that's like that go back to the business and the shit that yeah. I learned and I was, you know, on your own. But anyway, that's another session. But like um to wrap up what I was saying, that's how uh, that part of it, you know, came about, and I was just kind of like, it don't need nothing. He's like, bro, at least do like a little outro or something, right. you know? So it's so I was just like, all right, fuck it. So I start playing some chords, and that's literally like the end of the song, like the little outro. And he be like, dedication, yeah. and yeah. like the beautiful. keys and stuff. Yeah. So I just played that part and like added some stuff to it. And yeah, that was it. Oh, nice. wow. That's so yeah, that's cool. fire. Wow. So I that was like that the song. process, kind of, you know, in a nutshell. What was the key to getting the most out of Nipsey in the studio? Like, how what, what, how would you have to vibrate <laughs> to really get him on his, his optimal Man, level? Nip was a nigga that, because that's my nigga, like, that's my brother, but like, I, I always say respectfully, like, I don't even say, always say, but like, how I feel. And I'm, in, you know, entitled and can say this, like, out of respect, like that was like our musical, like, brother son. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because like he learned so much from us before he even was really like fucking around. He used to be at our studio. We put the Nipsey and YG connection together. We did like a lot of shit, you know, just to like help. You know what I'm saying? With you know, and he did a lot of shit to just give back with you know with us, and he trusted us. So. The thing was, like, he took so long to record, like, he would never record. Like, he would be in the studio and we'll be making beats and, you know, he'll be in there smoking, he'll vibe, 
You know what I'm saying? And, but it would take so much to get him to rap. Right. You know what I'm saying? It has to be, like, you got to do so much. So that's why Victory Lap sound like what it does, because we was doing tricks and all kinds. Mm -hmm. You hear shit that is like, wait, what the fuck? Why did the beat do this? And why right. did it switch up? And it's like, we had to do so much and really, like, and, and that was dope because it was a challenge. Right. Like, not to be complacent. Just because y'all do records and work with all these other niggas, don't just make a beat and give me something. Like, right, establish right. a sound and create a sound for me. Right. You know what I'm saying? So we literally have the historical only album that Nipsey ever did. Wow. You know what I'm saying? And, but we didn't know it was going to be that. But thank God he pushed us to be like, you know, he just in the, he on the yeah. couch sleep. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm smoking and whatever, whatever. But we know when some he know when he wake up like, hey, what's up, cut? Wait, what, cuz? What is that? It'll yeah. be three in the morning. He ready to go. He and he'll go in the booth and he might do four lines or he might do eight lines. And he double back. You know what I'm saying? Double back mean he ain't never coming back. <laughs> so <laughs> he'll be like, hey, y'all want something from the store? I'm a, I'm a double. I learned that on the second time. I learned that on the second time. <laughs> double, double, double back. So you you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and be like, hey, y'all want something from the store? I'm gonna go 7 Eleven, get some back backwards right quick. Like, yeah, nigga, give me some six, some Skittles and, uh, and, some, uh, and some Fiji water. Yeah. Like, all right, for sure, nigga, we in the vibe, nigga. Five beats later, we, nigga. Wait, wait, what happened in there? <laughs> the nigga Mike said, oh, he hit you with the double back. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, like that's that's our brother, man. Shout out to Nip, man. Let you peace, love for life. Man, that's yeah, dope, man. Oh my God. Yeah, that's fire, man. So talk about Mike and Keys, like, so y'all, so how how did y'all connect? Like, how did the whole Mike and Keys, 1500 or nothing, how did that whole family get established? Mike and Keys, um, around the same time I was working with uh, the underdogs, there was some, up, some event that Tyrese was doing. We was working with Tyrese, and I happened to meet Mike's sister. And me and Mike said, we went downstairs to like smoke. It wasn't, this was like when, you know, it wasn't really cool to smoke. Like, only if, oh, like, do you smoke? Like, oh, yeah, shit. Like, right. you know what I'm saying? Mm. So we just used to smoke and shit. And then she, I um, got in her car <laughs> and she started playing music and shit. And I'm like, she playing Jack Dilla, she playing Common, she playing all kind of shit that I'm like, yo, well, how are you up on all this? Like, you sh her music selection was fire. So one day she got, I got in the car and she was just playing some beats. And I'm just talking, I'm like, yo, what's up? Let's go grab something to eat. And this beat is playing. I'm like, what the fuck is this? She's like, oh, yeah, this is just like my brother's beats. So one, she's a G for just walking, just driving yeah. around, listening to her brother's beats, right? Okay. Her brother is Mike from Mike and Keith. Right, right. I'm like, call this nigga right now and tell him that I'm using this beat for my mixtape. Mm -hmm. This was in 2006. And she called on me. She's like, no, like, they study you. Like, they just, I, he get, they get on my nerves. Like, they all they do is watch your videos on YouTube all day long, 1500, mm. duh, 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 and duh, duh. Yeah. So I met them. They were super cool. Mike and Mike smoked weed, you know what I'm saying? And they had these fucking incredible beats. And I was just like, how are y'all beats sounding so fire? Like, like Dr. Dre sounding quality, right. big beat. So, you know. We, we developed a, a, a close relationship and um, working relationship and, you know, we just kept working. We just never stopped working. So um, fast forward to now, we're doing an instrumental tape, my first ever instrumental tape. I uh, partnered with them and um, it's really fire. It's called Three Ninjas. Right. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah. I can't artwork, wait to hear it. artwork is on my Instagram and the video is on my Instagram. Y'all gonna drop the NFT for it? Yo, you don't do it too much, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like slacking down. down. You know? I said the artwork on my, NF, on my uh, Instagram. Uh, so you, you, so you work with Dre too, right? Uh, I I haven't worked with him personally, but yeah, I've been in the studio with him. Okay. I had I had a, 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 a few experiences. Man, I heard Dre is, 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 is no joke in the studio, mm -hmm. man. Nope, and he gonna let you know straight up. Yeah, I heard if you boo boo, he'd be like, hey man, this is dookie. This nigga Tiff was like, hey man, you want to come with me to uh, Dre's? I was like, he's like, hello? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm here. My, uh, <laughs> shit, man, all right, I'll pull up. Man, I'm like, all right, cool. Not like that, but it was because the, you know, like, I don't like, 
having like all you know it was so much like it felt like it was gonna be so much pressure right like i don't want to be judged i just want to make music you right. know what i'm saying right it's like um so we went in there tip was like yeah this is dre is excited long story short uh dre is like oh yeah uh play some shit so tip plays something he like yeah this is something that uh that uh that mars did just just uh started the album and this is actually the first song on his last album it's called season so he played a song it's like me playing the organ it's like real inspiration whatever and dre like it's like six seconds it's like dun, dun, dun. he like yeah no nah, i don't like that because he, like, yeah. <laughs> he, <was like, laughs> he sat at the board with his hand on the on the, the knob. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it's like six seconds, like, duh, duh, nigga. He was like, and Tip like, yeah, you know? He's like, yeah, no, nah, I don't like that one. Play, uh, Go to the next one. Oh. <laughs> I'm like, Ouch. And I felt like, Ooh. <laughs> you felt like my voice was like that. <laughs> yeah, like a cartoon character. <laughs> but then uh, Tip ended up playing something else afterwards. And, um, it was called Warzone during, you know, all the, like, this was when niggas was getting, like, we was getting shot, like, mm -hmm. every week. Like, not that we ain't, but I'm saying it was, like, broadcasted, like, live, you know what I'm saying? Like, crazy. And um, uh, Tip did a song called Warzone. And, um, yeah, like, nigga, that whole shit was fucking crazy, bro. Like, the, the way we just, like, created that whole song and created the whole, you know what I'm saying? My, and my dad actually, I, I used the sample from my dad's album, from a gospel album. Oh, okay, your dad's a gospel album. Yeah. Uh, okay, yeah. that's dope. My dad's a bishop. Oh, okay. Wow, this guy has so many stories to tell. I almost forgot that I was doing any reaction, to be honest. Um, this podcast, this is really good. I really like this format. It is really entertaining. They have a lot to say a lot to say actually and you know i hope i hope that after the roast me that craig smith and the rest of the cast continue this you know cause because you guys including me like it so yeah i appreciate it shout out to my dad yeah i mean you got business shout out to pops bro. Nah, I'm sorry. <laughs> This nigga, he'll get up in the, in the uh, hey, pulpit and so be like, funny. yeah, so before I do this message, you know, I just want y'all to know, uh, my son, you know, he produces for Jay-Z, Mr. T, you know, he be just saying. He said Mr. T. <laughs> he's so, he's so old school, he just be saying names. Oh, uh, uh, oh, nigga, yeah. I remember one time I came back, I'm like, dad, I was working with Snoop and working with, uh, Jay-Z, like, duh, 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 duh. he's like, oh, man. I came back, uh, to Lancaster on a Sunday to play the organ. He like, yeah, my son is in town. He was out with uh, LL Cool J and Mr. T. <laughs> <laughs> and Mr. T. Nigga, uh, what is that nigga, my cousin. Nigga, <laughs> my best friend. Yeah, looking at me like, nigga, Mr. T. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but man, oh, my son. Oh, oh, my son. He gonna let you know. He like, yeah, I got a record with T.I. You know, he sampled my record. You know, y'all make sure y'all go out and buy that. Now, if you go to Le Leviticus. Uh, <laughs> That's dope. Shout out to Pops, man. Yeah, so Dre was feeling Warzone. Yeah, he was feeling Warzone. He was, uh, when Tip played it, he was like, you, that's you playing? Because, like, I played some music and stuff. Mike and Keys, yeah. you know, and myself did. And he was like, that's you playing the uh, Keys? I was like, yeah. He was like, He's like, yeah. So I'm like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So that made me be like, you know what I'm saying? That made me get back, you know, regular size. Like, yeah. 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 I'm back. All right, I'm gonna vibe. Man, that's dope. The T.I. connection. I see y'all y'all are together quite a lot, man. How yeah, that's my bro. That's my big bro. How you get tight, man? He that's looked out man. for me, too. Shout out to T.I. He a great dude, man. Yeah. yeah. That's my guy. Um, <laughs> Y'all don't know that name. Shout out to T.I. 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 Shout out
<laughs> Somebody had a little some weed backstage and kind of just fucked my spelling up. You know what I, mean? <laughs> I think yes. he did it on purpose. Yeah, nah, man. I, um, yeah, nah, Tip is like my big brother. We actually, his, his birthday is actually the day before mine. And some, some more years, you know what I'm yeah. saying? But, T.I. 57, a lot of people don't know. He <laughs> does a great job. Hell no. Nah. Not humiliating himself with his real age. 51, or oh, 57. <laughs> <laughs> no, but go ahead, big man. Nah, man, so um, <laughs> we just shit, man. Like, I met him, and, uh, you know, short short story, you know, basically my attorney put us on the phone. We got the, we, we got the same attorney. And, um, he got a great attorney. Yeah, you have to when you do great he music. You with Maya <laughs> and Ti. No, nah, he didn't connect me with nobody. I connect. I connected myself with. Like, okay, there we go. God connected me with. You know, what I'm saying it was just alignment for real. To Hello. be honest, there we go. But yeah, so like, um, he was just like he put us on the phone. He's like, yo, I want to put you on the phone with Tip. Uh, he wants. He wanted to start back doing beats. He did some beats on his first album, and you know he was producing a little bit, but he wanted to get back to it making beats. So he, I'm like, uh, all right, cool. So he like, he needs somebody to like help him make beats. He's like, he looking for a doctor, he looking for a Scott Storch for him to be Dr. Dre. And I'm like, nigga, I'm Dr. Dre and Scott Storch. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say that, but I was just thinking like, all right, but cool. So he put us on the phone, like, yo, what's up? Hey, what's up, man? Hey, shit, shawty, hey, man, dude. I'm like, all right, cool. He like, all right, so can you get out on the flight tonight? Nigga, I walked to like, I, I didn't even have a car. I got in an accident. Nigga, I walked to where I was going. And he's like, can you get on a flight tonight? I'm like, I mean, I gotta get my shit together. Like, let me try to, I gotta call somebody. I gotta figure it out, you know? So, nigga, I got out there and this nigga picked me up. He ain't have nobody else, but he picked me up and escalated. Shout out Pee Wee, Roscoe in there. And, um, man, we got to the studio and he was just like, he got me, he, he pulled me in like in the office. He was like, yo. He's like, bro, if it's anything that you see that you don't fuck with or any anything that you don't fuck with, you know what I'm saying, just holler at me or, you know what I'm saying, I want you to be comfortable, I want you to be straight, you know what I'm saying. Everybody, you know, smoke weed, everybody, you know, niggas is ghetto, you might see, you know, guns, all the shit, you know what I'm saying, niggas is straight, but everybody family in here. Right. All right, cool. This nigga put out a lot of money and gave me the money, and that was the first time I seen that much cash in my life. And that was the first time somebody gave me that much cash in my life. <laughs> And he was like, all right, this is for, you know, you should be straight with this and da 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 He's like, when's your birthday? I'm like, September 26th. He's like, what the fuck? Nigga, mine the 25th. Like, you smoke weed? Hell yeah. Nigga, what the fuck? Nigga, I do too. <laughs> you want to make some music? Hell yeah. Nigga, what the fuck? Yeah. I do too. <laughs> and then, like, from that day, we was just like, nigga, wow. except, like, and then how I learned his song, and I think he respected me more because I wasn't, like, a quote unquote fan of his music. I only knew Rubber Band. Right. Wow. That was the only song I knew when I met Tip. Right. I didn't know nothing about nothing. I know albums, no nothing. I was on some real West Coast. Yeah, yeah. Regional shit, you know. Now it's a lot different, but you know? So that I feel like he was like, we was, we was doing something. He was like, yeah, you know, like on the song, still ain't for game. I said, like when I did this, I was like, what's that? Like, Nick, you ain't heard. He's like, have you heard trap music? I'm like, what's that? He's like, what? <laughs> so literally, like, he don't know, but I, I, the way I learned his music was on accident. Like, we'll be at the studio and he'll drive in the morning. We'd be riding with, in the Range Rover, and then Lil Mama, uh, Tiny, would come to the studio in Bentley or something, and then he'd be like, all right, me and Lil Mama about to go out and da 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 da. Like, oh shit, I forgot I drove. Hey, huh? Here you go. Like, you know what I'm saying? Meet me at the house. Yeah. So he'll have like from his cousins and, you know, brothers listening to his old shit, the shit in the CD player. So I'll just be look, listening to CD player, like, and I'm listening to shit like, what the fuck? Right. Like, this is crazy, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So that's how I literally was, like, learning his music, like, in his car on an accident type shit. That's dope. Yeah. Shout out to T.I., man. Shout out to Tip, man. He one of them dudes that he get down there in the trenches. No facts. Yeah, I fuck really, with you, we fuck with you. I really Shut respect up. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Tell them the T.I. story. This your oh, co-sign session, nigga. Yeah, <laughs> so crazy. That's hilarious. This your co-sign session. <laughs> 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 We're going to go to showing all, uh, uh, showing all flexing too hard. Check it out. And when we get up, we're going to wrap. When we get back, we're going to wrap it up. Uh -huh. Yes, sir.
<laughs> Shout out to Paris. <laughs> nope. <laughs> nope. Oh, no. Oh. 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 Damn. And beat the car that's going all the way around. But we got the fans going crazy. Oh, we ready to see this. Wait, wait, Let's see get this it. Before. Ready. <laughs> Set. Go. You know what I mean? Yo, come on, come on, he coming. <laughs> come on, come on, he coming. <laughs> <laughs> he coming, he coming. Uh, oh, no, 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 no. Right before <laughs> Yo. <laughs> Just died. What up? Just what? jumped. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> you lost, bro. How did you lose, bro? All you gotta do is cross it. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Uh-oh. Oh. <laughs> This don't look good. Not at all. Is that yeah, a cop? Oh, this is so slow. Yeah, it ain't. 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 They ain't never showed up on it. Yeah. You just that's, fucked it up. That's too bad. That should look like a snark now. Fuck it. She said, fuck oh. this shit. Oh, no. Start over. What the fuck are you trying to do? Look at that. He's like, you know what? Look at that. He's like, you know what? He's like, what? He's trying to kick the what? I shouldn't have been on the bike. He was on the scooter. Razor. Oh, yeah, razor. Oh, oh, damn. Dang. Hello, hey, what's the f still there, you? <laughs> you. F what? The f oh shit. Yeah. Was he trying to do that? Funny clips, man. We're gonna wrap up the show, man. Mars, tell everybody where they can find you, G, and what you got coming up. MyGotMars.com, Instagram, everything MyGotMars. Instagram, MyGotMars. Uh, Twitter, MyGotMars, everything. Snapchat, TikTok, MyGotMars. Uh, what I got coming up? Disruptive innovation, always. Um, I just did a workshop with Reason and BPM Create uh, a few days ago very successful shout out to bpm create shout out to reason um like i said we got our beat tape coming out that'll be out on june 3rd uh, working on maya's album it's pretty much rap that'll be out sometime this year uh, yeah. and last but definitely not least working on my project as well um so you'll be hearing my like songs and visuals i'll be putting out songs you know as an artist as well. That's dope. You're still doing that thing where you, uh, I forgot exactly what it was called. After Church LA? Where you're giving a beat to a new artist? Uh, the beat action? Yeah. Yeah, I do it every now and again. So, you know, just tap in with me on my Instagram. I'm very uh, active on there, you know, with my DMs and trying to get back to people and, you know, help however I can. For sure. Slink, what you got coming up, man? Tell them where they can find you, G. Oh, man, look here, man. Uh... There's a lot of ways, man. If you're looking for me 
Want to get a quick response? The best thing you can do is hit me on Cash App. Dollar sign Slink Johnson. Uh, I'll respond with a little heart, a little thumb or something. Uh, or, you know, you can go to my website, slinkjohnson.com, or to smokeyourscrew.com. You want to get some of that fine merch. You know what I'm talking about? Slinkjohnson.com, smokeyourscrew.com. I'm uh, shit, I'm on stage. Just doing stand up right now. I got a uh, Phoenix coming up soon, Baltimore, DC. <clears throat> you know, this nigga doing this shit. A couple of movies, a couple of cartoons. Shit, I'm trying to do a little bit of it all. So, all right. uh, fuck with your boy, man. Smoke some weed. Yes, and uh, yeah. tell your mom, hit my phone. I, gotta, I still got the same number. <laughs> hey, bro, that's for you, too. Sp oh, speaking man, of weed. Go ahead, promote it, Mark. Uh, yeah, man, I got, I, got <laughs> strain, I got a strain out now. Um, the first producer uh, that worked, the first producer that produced for Nip to release their own strain at Nip's uh, cannabis store. So let's try this shit right now. For spike. Go ahead. Let's try this shit right now. Yeah, Greg, I'm, I'm going to do it. Oh, yeah, man, please, man. I ain't gonna put my brand on it. Space Walker. My logo on it. You know what I'm saying? You see the rocket, you see my logo on it. We could ride. We could ride. High quality, baby. Hell yeah. What kind of weed is it? What's the... That's an exotic, you know what I'm saying? That's what everybody, you know, like. Everybody, you know, had to see what, you know, the consumers fuck with. And then, you see, I'm about to say, I'm gonna help you. It's childproof. <laughs> well, I got the Hell yeah, with home. that. Big ass, <laughs> big ass kid. Hey, man. Nah, yeah, that's the vibe, man. Well, that's that's that shit, that shit, man. Y'all niggas. That's out. Uh, Go to my website, man. SmokeYoursCrew.com. Yes, sir. Get some of that merchandise, man. Do that shit. All the proceeds go to the Help Keep Tasha's Baby Daddy Out of Prison Foundation. <laughs> <laughs> So it's good. What's the weed good for? But is it good for writing? Is it do it keep you up? Like what's the attribute? Yeah, it it keeps you up. Um, you know, it's creative. You know what I'm saying? It's for creative. Is some right. sativa? Some tea. It's a hybrid. Hybrid is a little <laughs> weird. Thanks. Sativa dominant? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. 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 You got yeah. to investigate, yeah. sir. Yeah. Yeah. You got to yeah. investigate. Hey, you got to look at the package. You, see, you feel the packaging? You well, you know, Slick is still packaging. You got to investigate, sir. Nice, nice bag. Nice package. Slick is sniffing for sure. Yeah. All his weed got to be on steroids. You know what I'm right now, man. You niggas, man. I like you niggas, man. Love, Cash man. out, man. Dollar sign, Slink Johnson, man. Y'all niggas, you know what I'm saying? You go, you go, you go fuck with them other niggas. Them niggas don't even fuck with y'all, man. <laughs> they don't. But right. here we are right here hollering at you niggas. If I had a little chat screen right here, I'd call all you niggas by name, like Romper Room. Yeah, yeah. Nigga, now. You fuck with me, man. Go support a nigga. You know what I'm saying? I know you want to support, because I know you don't want me outside your window at 3.31 <laughs> in the morning with Slink, that I'm mask mad, on. Man. I got that mask, and I got Uncle Ty's bandana on. Like, I'm bad. You, you should have got the Magic Johnson role in what's the shit? But when they saw you didn't have no back teeth, they was like, no. <laughs> The magic, of, the magic of Hollywood, they done put him there, man. The, the magic of Hollywood, man. You, know, you, know. you just did good in that road on Magic, man. You didn't get the call for that? No, nah, I ain't get the call, man. I ain't get the call, man. You know how old, you know how tall the nigga is that booked the Magic Johnson road? No, what is it, 6'9"? 5'7". Are you serious? He's a little fatty nigga, man. man. Yeah, right. No, I man. promise you. He should not be 5'7". The nigga that's playing Kareem is supposed to be 6'11", for real. So I can't, Is he? Yeah. No, the Magic Johnson nigga. Yeah. I see he was hooping with G. Wayne the other day. He like a couple inches taller than G. Wayne. That's yeah, crazy. Get he got the 6'9 head on the 5'6 body. <laughs> <laughs> he looked like a human NBA Jams nigga. <laughs> like, man, like he was birthed out of the game. Like, like Sega spit out a nigga baby. <laughs> you ain't seen it? He was making stupid, bro. Johnson, bro, you got to oh, hear a lot of coochie on TV. Man. Yeah. Hey, hey, Mr. Munchie Crunch. Okay. Mr. Munchie Crunch. On TV, off TV, what you gonna do? Munchie Crunch. Yeah, Showtime Snacks. Showtime. Showtime Snacks. Hey, they clown EJ in it. I'm with EJ. There's like the look. I don't know, he won't. Every time I try to play basketball with him, he ends up picking flowers. <laughs> <laughs> 
they saying that. They saying that for real. Uh, <laughs> he keeps taking his helmet off. Uh, <laughs> shout out to the Johnson family. You know, <laughs> I didn't really realize, we're gonna wrap up the show right now. I didn't really realize how much Magic has done for the Lakers. What? But like the backstory, have you watched? Uh, what's it called? Yes, winning time. <laughs> okay, nigga, I'm time. a real Laker fan, yeah. Yeah. nigga. But I didn't know the winning Lakers, time. I didn't know that. The, besides winning, I'm a huge Laker fan too. But I'm talking about the backstory, the business part of it. I yeah. know the franchise was uh, about to go bankrupt. Nigga, I, oh yeah, yeah, it was a lot that I learned for yeah. sure. Yeah, yeah. like it was in shambles. Like they was about yeah. to have to put. Uh, clo- they was about to have to close the doors. All that money he missed from Nike, though, that man. was crazy. Yeah, man. Shout out to Magic Johnson, yeah. man. Yeah. Please. Please watch both the doc. Please watch the documentary and the TV show. Right. Yes. Too, because it, they call it magic. Yeah, definitely. Time. Respect it, Ma- Magic Johnson. Paris, tell everybody where they can find you. Oh, come say hello at uh, Paris <clears throat> McCracken. That's P E R R I S McCracken. Let's get it McCracken. Yeah. Instagram, Facebook. I'm there. There we go, <clears throat> Paris. Tell everybody where they can find you, Snaps. <clears throat> All right, Pin Roethlisberger on IG, Snaptastic underscore Pin. Look out for that Dina Collective album. Catch me on Craig Facts doing the tree talk. Shout out to the new nickname from Slink Johnson, Kendrick, I mean, Pendrick Lamar. <laughs> <laughs> you think you write all the time? Well, well I, I write, write more. more. Which is African language. I don't know if you know more. <laughs> more of the more. Yeah, okay. More, yeah. <laughs> Tell them where they can find you, uh, Tongue Leather. <laughs> All right. As you know, it's your man Sunny in the evening. Your hero for hire, professional role model. If you need to find me, find me wherever you gonna find me. But hit the like button wherever you see me. Wherever you see any of these gentlemen, yeah. hit the like button every time. You gotta have a tongue ring about that jacket. <laughs> Like a, a bloody, it's like a bloody stuff. I bought it second hand. It's a bloody... You had to have been the first base with a nigga to wear that jacket. Hell no. Hell no. Hell no. It's like a bloody slip and slide. Uncle Ty Comedy. I'm about to say my face. I'm going 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 to say my Major yeah. Forever. Major <laughs> yeah, bro, you still on the You still check You still check out my space? Yeah. Yeah. I think a lot of them. It went to Forever. It went to Forever every now and then. I'm going to Forever every now and then. I'm waiting for 1500 that to be. No. Oh, yeah. Can you go live on my space? No, I don't think that was a thing back then. Uh, no, it's still about now. It's still around. Oh, look. So you're like, you don't even know. She's going to play it off. Right. Yeah. 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 It's tight. That's a very good album out, man. It's called, it's called um, I'm Out There. It's uh, stand up comedy over beats, you know what I'm saying? It's one of the bangers comedy albums out there. It's got Left Me in Pasadena on there, Top of Tuesday. And check my comedy out, man. Um, shout out to I'm Out There Nation. I know you out there. Shout out to T.I. <laughs> Yo, wait, say us. Do he got time? Yeah, go ahead. Say, say it. You never said the story. The T.I. story? Yeah, oh, yeah. Shit, man. <laughs> oh, that album, man. That shit was banging. Yeah. Nah. So, yeah, I know T.I. Yeah, T.I. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Jack and Jack T.I. Yeah. 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 That's hilarious. Yo, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, That's been this episode of Craig Facts. If I owe you something, get it from God. God, God, God! Wonderful, wonderful episode. My thoughts. My thoughts about this podcast here is that I learned that Craig does music. Now that I know that, now it's that it's out there, 
I am going to do some research and hopefully I can do a few reactions to it. So you guys can check it out and listen to it with me. So I will do that for you guys. Other than that, the whole episode, it was really chill. It didn't even feel like an hour, to be honest. It just went by pretty quickly. But um, I hope you guys have a wonderful time. This is your boy Steph Yark, and I'm out. Peace.